Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 11th of July 2013. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up your daily Steam deals. The summer sale has begun. Usual advice applies. For the love of God. <laughs> for the love of God, please listen to it. Do not buy a game unless it's on a flash sale, a community choice, or the daily deal. The reason why you shouldn't do this is because, generally speaking, there are two tiers of discounts. The first tier is just the general discount throughout the sale. The second tier is what it hits when it goes on daily sale, flash sale, or community choice. So if you buy early, and then it ends up being on a flash sale or daily deal, and you end up spending more money than you had to, you'll feel like an idiot. Don't do it. Absolutely not. If you really want to pick up a game and it's not on those daily deals, then do wait for the final day of the sale before buying it. That means that you will not run into those problems. Secondly, flash sales tend to repeat themselves. That being because they are very, very quick. They are usually done over the course of a few hours as opposed to one or two days, which is what usually happens on the Steam sale as a direct result. I will not be covering flash sales during the sale box because by the time you've actually watched the show, the chances are the deal's gone anyway. They also rotate in and out of the daily deals as well, so you usually get a couple of chances to pick up a particular title, so do bear that in mind. Finally, while we will try and cover the regional prices, please bear in mind that Steam sales have been known to have errors in pricing across different regions. Also, the apps which are designed to give you that information can sometimes bug out. So please do consider the fact that the prices we give out may not necessarily be accurate in certain currencies. So please do bear that in mind and do look for yourself before hitting the button when it comes to buying these titles. So let's begin, shall we, with Bioshock Infinite, that being the headlining deal today at 50% off, taking it down to $30. 25 euros, 17 pounds 49, and sorry Australia, 40 Australian dollars. My opinion on Bioshock Infinite probably shouldn't matter to you. Such a monolithic title that received universal acclaim across the board for 50% off is most likely going to be bought by people anyway. What I will say is this. It has around an 8 hour or so campaign that has very little replayability and the story DLC is nowhere in sight up to this point. Meaning that you are paying $30 for an 8 hour experience. That is okay for some people, not okay for others. It has one of the best stories and some of the most interesting lore that I've ever seen in a game. However, I believe that the actual shooting itself is fairly subpar and the game suffers as a result of being an FPS. This for a lot of people didn't matter in any way, shape or form, but I just want to give you my opinion on it. It's a great discount for a title that most likely is not going to be receiving a discount for quite some time. So if you were teetering on the edge, then now is of course the time for you to fall. Left 4 Dead 2, 75% off again. Wasn't it that like last week? Five dollars, five euros in tier one, three seventy-four in tier two, three pounds seventy-four and five Aussie dollars. I still think Killing Four is better. Sorry, I do. I thought about that for a while, and my conclusion is it's just got more fun weapons. But Left 4 Dead 2 was a significant improvement on the original, which got a ton of hype and I didn't actually enjoy all that much. Left 4 Dead 2's extra variety of enemies, as well as better designed levels, different sub-objectives, and a larger selection of weapons did make the game significantly more enjoyable. And if you, for some reason, don't already own it, and you have an interest in playing with friends, then I would pick it up. If you want to play on your own, you're probably not going to be getting that much fun out of it, but hey! buy it and maybe you'll have friends later. That's a possibility. For the three people that don't know what Left 4 Dead 2 actually is, it is a four-player co-op zombie survival game whereby you are tasked with getting to the end of the level through various hordes of evil, evil minions. Definitely a ton of fun with friends, although if you try playing with puppies these days, considering that the game has been out for an awful long time, then you may very well have a poor experience. Let's just say that people tend to get very, very serious about their Left 4 Dead. Endless Space, that's 66% off, taking it down to $10.19. €10.19 in Tier 1, with €8.15 being the price in Tier 2, £8.49 and the same price in dollars and Aussie dollars. Endless Space is a 4x strategy game. It has been significantly improved and updated since its release, and there is also a DLC expansion for it called Disharmony. 
Is it good? I think that it's gotten to the point where it's definitely worth playing. I mean, I've done a couple of playthroughs of it. I found a lot of faults in it. You can find that, of course, in my WTF is of the title, which is very in-depth. But a lot of those faults have since at least been improved, if not completely resolved. Still missing espionage for some reason, but the ground combat in the expansion is much improved. And as a direct result, it may very well be worthy of a second look. The DLC is only 10% off, I'm afraid. You will not find a big discount there, but it did only come out like two days ago. That said, the gold edition of the game does include the DLC and is 66% off. So if you're buying in brand new instead of just trying to buy the DLC, I would strongly recommend getting gold. It will only cost you about a dollar more. As it stands, it's pretty good. It could definitely have a better battle system, which is essentially a kind of rock, paper, scissors card based thing. But aside from that, I think that at this point, the game is definitely worth looking into. <laughs> Don't Starve, 40% off, taking it down to 8 US and Australian dollars, as well as 8 euros 39, 719 for Great British Pounds. I would be wary of this price because it keeps changing. It's changed on us about three times in the last 20 minutes, so God knows if it'll be right by the time the video comes out. But regardless, Don't Starve is a 2D survival game with an emphasis on the idea of survival. That is pretty much what the game is about. Combat system in that game kind of sucks, but that's really not what the game is about. It is about gathering resources, it is about surviving, not going insane, and dealing with the increasingly strange world. It is a game that I would heartily recommend if you are looking for a pure survival experience. It is hyper-stylized, and it benefits greatly from Clay's interesting and rather warped sense of humor and aesthetic. Hotline Miami. 75% off, taking it down to $2.49, 2 euros 12, 1 pound 74, and 2 Australian dollars 49. Without a shadow of a doubt, I would recommend this title if you are okay with two things. One, extremely tricky, hyper-stylized violence, and secondly, the idea of the screen waving backwards and forwards in a manner that makes me seasick. That's the problem that I have with it that actually prevented me from playing the game in long spurts simply because I couldn't handle the way that the screen waves backwards and forwards as you move around the level. Aside from that, the game is critically acclaimed for a very good reason. It is a shooter. It might as well, though, be a puzzle game because you have to plan your movements. It looks like an arcade game, but since you die in one hit, you do the levels in such a way that you very carefully plan how you intend to engage. It is a great game, fantastic soundtrack, great aesthetic, and I would heartily recommend it. It is a challenge, don't get me wrong, and that's one of the best parts of the game. What looks like a generic arcade beat-em-up romp is in fact a very technical and very unique title. Tokitori 2, 34% off, taking it down to $9.89, €9.23 and €7.25 in Tier 2, and £7.91. It's definitely a hard sell at that price point, I'm afraid. It's a fairly fun title, it's a little bit of a puzzle platformer, and it is cutesy. Very much so. This is also Tokitori 2 Plus, we should bear in mind. The original Tokitori titles are significantly cheaper than that, so it may very well be that you wish to look into those instead. The 2 Plus version is packed with content. It also comes with a level editor, which is fantastic. But the original, if you haven't already tried it, not only does it have a demo available, but it's about 99 cents right now, which is super cheap at 80% off. Probably never going to get cheaper than that. So that's something to bear in mind. Now, that would be a good way of testing whether or not it's actually a title for you. At that price tag, though, since Tokitori 2 Plus was only recently released, even though Tokitori 2, this is really hard to say, by the way, Tokitori 2 came out quite some time ago. I would probably give this one a skip on the basis that you can try the original a lot cheaper. Of course, if you already enjoyed the original, then you might want to go in for this, but at only 34% off, I wouldn't really call it a great deal. Call of Juarez, Gunslinger, 33% off a recent release. This one taking it down to $10.04, 10 euros and four cents, and and eight pounds and three. I unfortunately have bad news for the Australians. It will cost you 12 Australian dollars for some reason. This is a pretty damn good game once you've dealt with the FOV problems. There is no slider in the game, but you can modify it in the .ini files. I would strongly suggest that you do. Go and check out pcgamingwiki.com for information on how to do this. This is very much an R 
arcade western first person shooter. I find it extremely enjoyable. It's also got a really cool arcade mode whereby you're encouraged to speed run and stylishly take down enemies. The weapon selection in this game is not exactly great, but it does have an interesting talent system which allows you to specialize in different kinds of gunslinging. For its price tag, it's definitely worthwhile. It was only a $15 release to begin with, so I didn't really expect to see a huge price cut, but if you are looking for Western FPS action, then I would recommend it. It is a solid game. Please do remember to check out my WTF is of this particular title. If you want more information before you buy, remember to click the annotation link on the screen. Defiance, 66% off, taking it down to $13.59, at €10.19, £6.79. Pretty cheap deal in the UK for this one. This is an MMO that is tied into the Sci-Fi Channel series Defiance, and it does not require a subscription. The MMO itself is actually a third-person shooter with full-on vehicle mechanics, and my experience with the game was actually quite positive, perhaps surprisingly to a lot of you. It feels quite a lot like Borderlands, but in an MMO style. It's got a lot of different weapons, it's got some pretty solid shooting mechanics, and the actual missions themselves are fairly enjoyable. If you like the idea of driving across a wasteland, taking down various different types of enemies while upgrading your character and finding all sorts of different kinds of guns and gear to wear, then you may very well enjoy Defiance. For that price, I would actually recommend it if you are into the MMO style of doing things. Don't get me wrong, questing can get laborious, grinding and leveling up can get laborious and enemies can most assuredly get repetitive. But if you're into those kind of games and you understand the various problems that MMOs have as a genre, you might find this game enjoyable. What surprised me most about it was the fact that the combat wasn't just a lame set of activatable abilities. It was in fact a very interesting and capable shooter. So yes, I would actually say Defiance is worth dipping into for that price. I think you'll find some enjoyment there. Anti-Chamber, 66% off, taking it down to $6.79, 6 euros uh, 45, as well as 5 pounds and 9 pence. This is a brain-melting first-person puzzler. I enjoyed this game while I was playing with the developer. It's not the kind of game that I would most likely play on my own because I'm an idiot. If, however, you are not an idiot, then Antichamber is a convention-defying and indeed questioning title. It's the kind of game that says, right, well, we know how you think when it comes to video games, now you have to think in a different way, otherwise you will not be successful. That's the beauty of the game, I guess, and there are very few games that allow you to actually experience a complete deconstruction of what these games usually involve. Admittedly, it will most likely come at the cost of the deconstruction of your visual cortex. And that leaves me with my deal of the day, which I think has got to go to Scribblenauts Unlimited. 75% off, takes it down to $5 only in the US. That's an absolutely fantastic price. Australia can celebrate because it's that price over there as well, with €4.74 and £3.74 being the prices in other regions. This game is so much fun for those with a creative and perhaps slightly sadistic mind. The great thing about it is that you can solve puzzles in the most ridiculously contrived and silly ways, which is perfect for me that tries to do that in regular puzzle games and fails miserably. It's consistently fun, the Steam Workshop means there's basically infinite content coming out for the bloody thing, and quite frankly, it is always worthy of a laugh. A very creative and very inventive game that, as far as I'm concerned, is well worthy of your time. So, by all means, please do go check out Scribblenauts Unlimited, currently 75% off on the Steam sale. Alright folks, that wraps me up for today's deals. Bear in mind, those deals will last for 48 hours. Yes, indeed, two days this time around, so if you miss them, don't worry, you can grab them tomorrow if you're tuning into this show on the 12th of July and thinking, What was the point? I've wasted time. Fear not, these deals are still there. I'll be back tomorrow with yet more deals, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Total Biscuit, and I'll see you next time.